Hello and welcome to Tiski Sour. I'm Michael Walker and as ever, I'm joined by co-founder of Navarro Media, co-host of Tiski Sour, Aaron Bastani. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Michael. How are you doing? I, we, I think our, our audience just missed out on an extraordinary conversation around uh, regional regional foodstuffs and uh, cuisine where where our guests today is from. Oh, my, can I, I'll do the introduction now. You do the introduction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're also I'm a, joined by... I'm a bit by, sad about that. We're very lucky to be joined by legendary activist and organiser from Manchester Momentum, Beth Redmond. Hi, yeah. Thanks for coming down to London for us. No, it's fine. No worries. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm sound. Um, feel sly that Aaron was taking the piss out of Scouse before and everyone missed it, but... I didn't even know what Scouse was. Explain. It's basically like a stew with lamb in it um and potatoes and carrots and you can put it in a yorkshire pudding or you can have it without one and it's lovely sounds kind of heavy no nah, it's nice not a summer but you snack. can't have it for your breakfast as aaron was trying to insinuate because <laughs> when we do sound checks obviously that the the this is a inside view into the media industry is that people often say what would you have for breakfast and so when we asked beth i said scouse <laughs> and obviously beth thought i was taking the mickey but i, I know i meant it <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's not many English food stuffs, right? There's Yorkshire pudding, there's Lancashire hot pot. I'm from the south. I mean, we've got nothing. We've got absolutely nothing. Fish and chips. That's not southern. But yeah. from the seaside bit of, of the southern. No, no, it's nah, not. There's like seaside bits in the north as well. You can get fish and chips. Yeah, that's actually more where fish is from, isn't it? Because from like the yeah, Danish, exactly. Norwegian, it's cold naughty. oceans. Yeah. Don't try and claim it. English Channel's not fish like uh, I mean it is but it's not like a big fishing thing right the big fishing places are like Grimsby Hull no you're right uh, <laughs> in the, there's a, when we go late I always like looking at the speculation in the comments section as to why we're going late uh, some people suggested that Gary was having his Weetabix some people suggested we nationalise Gary or switch him Oof. on and off what you Harsh. didn't know is that Gary is in Miami wow. so we might be able to get up a picture of him on the beach is he doing his best Will Smith impression? <laughs> is he coming up? Yeah. Don't worry, he is not on holiday. He is there for work. Is he really yeah, there he for is. work? Yeah, he's... A laptop. <laughs> Today, with Beth, we're going to be talking about... Uh, your appearance on Newsnight last week about protests outside abortion clinics. We're also going to be talking about your experiences uh, in activism, both as part of mass movements and part of the crank left. <laughs> uh, we are Don't mince your words, going Michael. to... No, she was on the crank left. I've read, oh, she's admitted see? it in were an you, article. Were you, were you a crank? I was a crank. Self-identified crank, yeah. A naive crank. Embarrassed now. Uh... Oh, for fuck's sake. Michael, what's wrong with you today? Sound professional. I'm trying to play. I'm trying he's, to... Addicted, he's addicted to hearing himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he, plays, he plays like Tisky on loop when he's at the gym. <laughs> he, he edits out everybody else except for himself using Audition. <laughs> Actually, MP3s which Michael. make no sense. It's just a conversation with just him. My lighting's worse today. What's going on? Anyway. You, you look like you look the great. ham today. I thought I looked kind of pasty. Anyway, we're going to start off with, that's just the, that's with the, the big news. The fake tan's not been employed though. The tinted moisturiser. <laughs> yeah, I need to go back. Well, I got, I, got uh, I think, complacent because I was thinking like spring's going to come. I'll just get natural tan. You won't but, get tan till but to get, And also to get natural tan, you have to like hang outside for like yeah, over 30 minutes yeah. for ages. So it's like... Get on the sunbeds. I prefer sitting inside. You know, three minutes in a sunbed, then you can spend the rest of the day like on your laptop. Much more efficient. <laughs> That's the life on I want. Facebook. That's the life I want to lead. Yeah, listening yeah, yeah. to himself on yeah. Tisky Sour. You can sometimes yeah, <laughs> listening to myself on Tisky <laughs> Sour. Walker.mp3. Uh, Aaron. Yeah. We're going to start by talking about airstrikes in Syria. Yeah. I'm directing this at you because I know that you wrote an article about it today in Navarra mm. on Navarra Media. Mm. Uh, my opinion is that it's not actually changed very much. So it seems to me like these these airstrikes, they won't change the situation in Syria. They don't seem to have harmed many people. They gave warning to Russia. They gave warning to Syria. It seems like it's all for show. Yeah. And I can't see how this changes the situation on the ground or geopolitics. And in a way, I'm not sure how wound up we need to get about it. Well, I know that's a controversial thing can, to say on I, the left, but I'm going to... Look, so if you've got a concern about a chemical weapons factory, these... 
presumably will have large quantities of sarin gas, chlorine, etc. Surely the last thing you want to do is blow them up. I read that's the best way to get rid of chemical weapons, blow them up. <laughs> How? Uh, well, I, I, I assume would... once you disperse them enough, because it's the concentratedness of them that's a the problem. Like well, chlorine's it... in the swimming pool. Well, so, no, but like, so it's concentrated chlorine that's a problem. But like Novichok, like we know that it's super concentrated. So if, if you started releasing large quantities of Novichok into the atmosphere... But they haven't got Novichok. Well, no, but I'm saying it's, con so what, it's contingent on the kinds of chemical weapons they do have. In terms of whether or not you bomb it or not. I do we know what so, they've yeah. got? <laughs> There's a problem on, last, on Monday. <laughs> after the show, I also, or I also like to Gary on today's Monday, on Thursday, like, how, how was the show? How did it go? And he was like, it was okay, but... You were both burping too much. <laughs> <laughs> you were you that's why you shouldn't drink when you do these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least leave a oh, little whatever. space between when you're on the mic yeah. and drinking. Well, I'm getting old. I mean, I'm getting reflux now, you know, so I can't. I need to be a professional. <laughs> reflux. I need to be like Michael, sort of, you know, here just MP3s for myself. And Michael, lo three lozenges. beers and two coffees. <laughs> <Three> <laughs> No, but yeah, the, the, piece, anyway. the piece I wrote, I'll be brief. The piece I wrote, basically, um, it talks about how there's hypocrisy at the heart of the British uh, foreign policy of the last 25, 30 years, obviously longer than that. But um, in terms of the immediate context surrounding John Major, Blair, Brown, Cameron, and now Theresa May. And if you look at the protests in Iran, for instance, at the turn of the year, around 24 people died, including police officers. Obviously terrible. I'm not apologizing for that. I'm not excusing it. But then, of course, you have 24, 25 Palestinians die at the Gaza border a couple of weeks ago. Around 20 people have died in Turkish prisons who were arrested in connection with the coup there in 2016. Widely accepted that torture is back in Turkey. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, you've got this guy, Prince bin Salman, fettered by the West, who has spent approximately 1.3 billion on a yacht, a chateau in France, and a Da Vinci painting in the last 12 months, last 18 months. What? Yeah, it's amazing. So you've got these guys, these are the people we work with, yet Iran is a tyranny that's teetering on the edge. Mohammed al-Sisi, um, sorry, not General, it's General al-Sisi, his first name's not Mohammed. General, <laughs> is that racist? No, it's not, fine, don't worry, my dad's Iranian. General <laughs> al-Safata al-Sisi, right, he's best laughing. He killed 600 people in one day. In 2013, six, that's like Tiananmen Square. And he got rid of a democratically elected leader. And now when he was re-elected a, a few weeks ago, Theresa May says, congratulations, with 97% of the vote, by the way. Theresa May says, well done, you're taking Egypt down the path to democracy. The Russian elections, a couple of weeks later, sure, look, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. Russia is not a model democracy. But if we're going to rank people in terms of popular consent, a level of constitutionalism, Putin beats beats El Sisi, and uh, of course, you know he's viewed as an enemy of the West. So I thought, look, let's talk about this hypocrisy and say, if we want to be viewed as a fair broker in the Middle East, which we all want that, then we probably have to stop doing this. And that's what the article is about. Uh, today in Parliament, there was obviously all the debates about the airstrikes that were taken without parliamentary assent. Uh, so people were expecting Theresa May to get a dressing down by MPs. Obviously, the usual suspects on the Labour backbenches rose to the occasion to basically turn the fire on Jeremy Corbyn. You had Chris Leslie standing up saying, Theresa May, don't you think that people who have stood by and called for inaction are just as culpable? <laughs> you know, like really, really super dramatic. John Woodcock also outside made his own Twitter video saying that it could not be tolerated that we let chemical weapons be used without a proper military response. This is the same John Woodcock that is a cheerleader for the Erdogan regime who have been accused of using chemical weapons in Kurdistan. Not that he would care, it seems. Maybe he does. If he, he does, if he does, he can correct He's us. just come back from Saudi Arabia, who are at war with Yemen and uh, who, who are responsible, I think, in, uh, indirectly and directly, for a million people having cholera there. So, you know, maybe he should STFU. <laughs> Wait, what, sorry, what do you mean by how, about cholera? What was that? There's been a million cases of cholera in um, in the Yemen-Saudi war. Right. Obviously, as you'd say indirectly, because obviously, you know, this is not being, you know, it's not, you know, it's not a biological yeah, weapon yeah, yeah, that the yeah. Saudis are using, but uh, collateral damage of destroying, you know, large urban areas, destroying uh, sanitation, water supply, etc., has meant that 
there have been a million registered cases of cholera in Yemen wow. in the last couple of years. So war crimes are abhorrent unless you can sell weapons to that regime from uh, from BAE, which you are basically a lobbyist for. Oh, well. Uh, is that what you're Oh, well? <laughs> <laughs> is, that what, is that what Michael Walker's got to say about this? Oh, well. Absolute injustice. <laughs> No, we've, I mean, we've been talking about deselecting John Woodcock for ages. How many times can we do it? I'm not going to run a competition <laughs> on what he looks like today. Uh, did we, I wonder if whoever came up with Boiled Ham ever got sent their prize. Oh, they need to email uh, info at navarramedia.com. All right, yeah. It's your fault if you haven't. <laughs> uh, we are going to move to more parochial uh, regions for the next story. Camden, to be precise, where the People's Vote, another week, another platform, was launched these guys are the usual suspects again, but these ones want to stop Brexit. So it's Woke Soobs, mm -hmm. Chucka Ramuna, and Caroline Lucas now from the Green Party. Not a particularly good look for her. Close to Navarra's heart, <laughs> because it is John Luke Picard, who apparently himself would have voted. Did. Hey, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy was for Romaine. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I'm not. It's fake news. Oh, good people would be like, "What's it? Who are those melts? What's that melt? Uh, the Press Gazette." But Navarra Media fake news outlet said that Miss Piggy was actually the one. <laughs> at the Poor Miss centrist. Piggy. Fuck we are unable to confirm whether or not Miss Piggy was for Remain. But wasn't she on the Mar show yesterday? Patrick Stewart <laughs> has confirmed that Jean Luc Picard was Remain, and that dude from the X Men, what's he called? Charles. Charles Xavier. Charles Xavier. Well, I thought it was the same person. I well, don't well, know. Well, it's the same Picard actor, is. which is like the doll's very realistic, so you recognise the face, I but it's a confused. different outfit. Okay. Maybe I've moved him and that messes it up with the camera. Does that upset you that Charles Xavier... You sound like an ex... ex <laughs> oh, are you, are no, you a fan of the X... Are you a fan Do of the X... Do I look like a fucking X-Men geek? Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're not a fan of the X-Men universe? No, I've seen it. Like, it's a fine film, but, like, I don't know who all the characters are. How did you think the Charles Xavier fella would have voted in the EU Yeah, referendum? I mean, like, he seems like a bit of a meth. Like, he probably would have voted for me, yeah. <laughs> Do you think he's a meth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He is, isn't he? <laughs> Aaron, you're often talking about how celebrity endorsements can matter. I think you were just saying last week that the centrist party, you're not sure why they haven't sort of brought in any big shot celebrities. Patrick Stewart's pretty big. Do you think this could be a game changer in any way or form? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Apparently we're losing sound every time we cut to a cutaway. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, Gary, for all the uh, for the people giving hate to Gary in the comments. Oh, poor Gary. You know, Gary, uh, now you miss him, huh? Aww. Well, you can vote in the comments. Would you prefer sound or would you prefer images? <laughs> 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 and we will follow your lead. Uh, <laughs> John Luke Picard, you saw him on... Did you see him on Mar? No. Oh, I should have sent it to you beforehand. You saw Sorry, him on Mar. Yeah. So he said in his... Um, it was a pretty ridiculous interview. So he'd obviously been put up there by this movement. He sort of said as much as well because he hadn't, he obviously hadn't been briefed very well. So he was sort of asked why he cares about this particular movement and why he's getting involved now. And he said, oh, well, you know, there's some people behind this campaign. And if they ask me to do something, I do it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> it's like, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're an actor. You're, I'm, you know, this is this Andrew Marr now, not him. So he's saying, you, you know, you're an actor. You, you haven't spent your life in politics. Why do you care about this? Like, well... I have to say, the reason I really care about this yeah. is emotion. No. It's an emotional issue, which he says. Why like, is it an emotional issue? Well, he said, well he, says it was, he said the happiest day of his adult life was when we joined the EU. Oh, that is fucking sad, that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've lost any respect for I think maybe he said that. only one. He said one of them. One of the happiest moments of his adult life was the EU. Get a grip. Okay, Beth. <laughs> what? The European Union. Yeah. Is it the United Federation of Planets or is it the Borg? I don't understand that either, Dad. <laughs> what uh, TV okay. show is that from? I have that's, that's from got, Star Trek. I have right? no idea. I'm going to go with the first answer. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Because he, he said that Jean-Luc Picard would obviously be pro-Romain. 
and because um, he thinks the EU is like the United Federation of Planets. But actually, this is a great article. Are by... you a little Star Trek nerd no, no, as no. well? No, no, it's a great article. You it's are. in the Stephen, uh, Stephen Bush article in the New Statesman today. And he says he doesn't understand. Actually, leavers think it's like the Borg, mm. which is a far better analogue. Who are kind of like an inhuman cyborgs. Do you Can you know explain both are? of those things to us, please? What the fuck? So the Borg and so the, the United Federation of Planets, obviously in the in the, in the, in the Star Trek universe, yeah, they try to present this massive bureaucratic organisation as values driven, human. People are making individual sort of um, choices all of the time. Very values driven, right? Mm. Every episode of Star Trek's like that. All of us know that all bureaucratic organisations don't work like that even the good ones uh, and so the better analog is the borg and what's the borg the borg are kind of like quasi robotic race where all individualism is stamped out is that from star trek as and well and they only want to and their 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 line is resistance is futile which i think is a very appropriate line when one is speaking about the european union for instance look at the the greek bailout when you know the greeks tried to do something about their situation with the oki vote and of course, their banks were starved of liquidity because the whole point is when you're in the Eurozone, resistance is futile. So Jean-Luc's got it very badly wrong, actually. The other way um, Patrick Stewart fucked up is he'd obviously been told, don't say you want Remain. You know, it's called the people's vote because they're saying we're not a campaign for Remain. What we want is a vote on the final deal. And then Andrew Marr says to him, but if they vote against the final deal, we'll just leave with no deal, right? And he said, oh, no, 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 we'll Remain. <laughs> Say that. Yeah. So that's really on script. <laughs> and then Andrew, Andrew Mars like, so you, you, you want to remain? He's like, oh yes, I. Uh. So, say. so he completely what goes on script. He he just just like, I want to remain. Well, it was the happiest day of his adult life. Good for guy, great. <laughs> Beth, you were also on TV last week. I was, yeah. Uh, we were going to show the clip, but Gary from Miami, the other side of the Atlantic, told us that we're not allowed to play. BBC clips in case they sort of come down hard on us oh, uh, in the legal realm. But uh, do you want to tell us what you were talking about? I was. You can do an impression of yourself. Okay, I'll try <laughs> my hardest. Um, I was on Newsnight on Thursday, I think, um, and I was basically discussing um, uh, buffer zones outside abortion clinics. So um, recently there's been a bit of an upsurge. I've been told unofficially that um, the government is currently... Uh, funneling lots of money into kind of evangelical churches and kind of the bad kind of sex education. Wait, the government are? Yeah. The um, government are funding evangelical... I don't, I do, I, as I say, unofficial. I don't know how that works. don't know what, what, what that means in, in theory. Um, but basically what that means in practice is that um, outside loads of abortion clinics, there are lots of pro-lifers who are staging protests uh, and basically trying to stop uh, women going into abortion clinics. Um, so a few councils, uh, Ealing was the first one, Manchester have also done, I think somewhere in Leeds have as well, basically passing uh, motions to prevent um, any protests going on outside the abortion clinics at all, um, which I, I think is good, in my opinion, that's good. Um, so in Manchester, what's happened is that... Um, uh, basically, a group called Sister Sister Supporter, who was set up in Ealing initially, but uh, what we've been doing in Manchester as well, they they the pro lifers have basically done this thing called the Forty Days for Life protest, um, and they set up shifts and they stand outside the abortion clinics, and we've basically set up shifts as well, the same to kind of like counter protest them. Um, some of the things we've seen them do, so the worst that we've seen them do, we've seen them hit one of our women with their car oh my god um yeah insane they've thrown holy water all over the building all over the paths that the women are using to to enter the clinic with um they pray very loudly holding their rosary beads um they have dolls of fetuses that are all the wrong sizes so like obviously the, the majority of women who get abortions they're getting abortions at like eight weeks um uh, but they're showing fetus dolls that are literally at maybe like 16 weeks or something like that. So the, all, all the information they give out is incredibly misleading. Um, so we're basically trying to stop that. And this is something I didn't know this happened in the UK. So I, I, I have the, the image of evangelicals protesting outside abortion clinics and trying to guilt women not to not to get the abortion. But I thought that was only something that happened in the States. I didn't realize that happened 
in the UK? Is it is it widespread or? I think what's happened is the um, not necessarily maybe because of Trump's election, but like I think funding to similar organisations in the UK has increased since Trump got elected. So, for instance, um, the sh- I think it's called the Students Alliance for Life or whatever it's called. They've managed to um, get enough money now to pay three full time employees. Wow. Um, to basically organize on campuses in the UK um, for, for like pro-life stuff. I think that that is as a result of, of Trump being elected and things like organizations in, in the US like Planned Parenthood being defunded. How, how new like are that. they? How new are what, sorry? This particular organization, I mean, how, when did it sort of become a phenomenon on your radar? Uh, on my radar, in maybe the last four years or so. I've been been doing like abortion rights activism since like for five years or so um and they definitely weren't as big when when i first first got involved and is it all, all evangelicals because obviously catholics are also have problems with abortion um i wouldn't i, would, I don't want to say that it's all evangelicals the probably the nastiest ones are as in the ones who like throw holy water and stuff like that i think i think they all are um but I think within kind of like the labor movement and stuff like that, you don't really come across. Um, I think the only place I've come across like kind of people who are pro-life is maybe in Scotland, mm. um, where there's still like uh, a, a lot of Catholics there who um, who are, I I don't want to I don't, I don't want to like say like feel f- okay to like talk about stuff like that, but are still kind of actively pro-life mm. in but I don't think that it happens anywhere else. I mean, I think the active protest is more associated with evangelicals in yeah, the States definitely. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's mad. And a lot of people like yourself like don't, don't know that it goes on in the UK. But uh, So how many people are on their demos and how many people are on yours? They normally... Uh, I mean, we basically, because it's such a sensitive topic as well, we don't want to like send fucking 50 people outside the clinic and like... Because obviously women are, are trying to go in, like they don't want anyone to know they're going in there. Mm. Usually, like it's it's a horrible time for anyone. So they normally only have maximum I've ever seen is six. Um, so we only ever send three at a time. Um, and usually the people that they send are all male. Um, they're usually all over the age of fifty at least. They normally have like one woman with them, um, but. Uh, yeah, we we would never send any more than four, just because it's obviously distressing. Mm. We don't want to like, um, kind of make anyone annoyed or make anyone more distressed, so that they turn away or anything like that. I mean, it's really weird that they're all men. I mean, it suggests that as part of their movement, there are very few women. Because from a PR perspective, obviously, if you're going to protest at an abortion clinic, it looks much better if you can send some women to try and persuade mm. women not to have an abortion. So if you've got a bunch of old men doing it, yeah, it's. But I assume that's the only people in their movement. Well, yeah, same. And I think we like in Manchester, we know like the the church that they all come from. Like, pardon me, I'm just on that thing that you burping. The little burp. Yeah, sorry. You'll be forgiven. <laughs> um, yeah, it it is mad, um, but it's been incredibly surprised. And I think to see because basically what we did in Manchester was. Um, we'd set up kind of like an organization to support the repeal the eighth campaign. Cause obviously there's a lot of Irish people in Manchester as mm. well. So we'd set that up last year. And um, I think like without anything kind of concrete to do physically, um, a camp, not necessarily campaigns at a loss or anything like that, but it's a bit like uh, people don't really know how to get involved or in- unless they're like donating money and stuff like that. So when this happened and we realized like the 40 days for life campaign was happening, um, the number of people who got involved mm. was amazing. Like, especially like the number of men as well. Like, cause I you automatically assume like it, was, it should be women who would empathize with, yeah. a, with an issue like that, but. Oh, that's interesting. That's where your movement came out of. So repeal the eighth is that in Ireland towards the end of May, I think they're yeah. having a referendum about whether or not to repeal the eighth amendment mm-hmm. in the Irish constitution which at the moment gives an unborn child the same rights as a pregnant woman. Yeah. Um, so essentially abortion is completely illegal mm-hmm. and that's going to be voted on by the end of May. May 25th. But people in Manchester, because they weren't able to sort of directly campaign in that particular camp- in that particular referendum, have sort of moved to what activism is possible in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Uh, let's talk about mass movement can more I ask, generally can I, can I ask yes. a question actually a couple yeah, of questions yeah, yeah. so first off 
what 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 do you think should be done about people that protest at these abortion clinics? I think the move to ban any kind of protest outside an abortion clinic is right. Yeah. Um, I understand that there is a tiny little bit of backlash from um, people on the left who say that if you ban any kind of protest anywhere, that could yeah. be detrimental to the left. But in essence, like, why the fuck would anyone be protesting outside an abortion clinic? Do you know what I mean? It's like women trying to access healthcare. Um, I, unless the right or, or whoever, the pro-lifers were there, um, I don't understand why there would be any need for us to be there in the first place. So I don't, I don't see why that is necessarily an issue. I think what if you if that's your line of argument, like what what's the alternative basically? Um, no, because I know a lot of people on YouTube in particular really, you know, they're really focused on freedom of expression, free speech, etc. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. What would the counter argument be to them? They would say, well, you're compromising their freedom of expression if, for instance, you think the state shouldn't allow them to do what they're doing so what's the sort i mean I, I agree with you it's obviously impeding people from accessing healthcare. yeah well so, what, what, what would the alternative be you just let let these people go there no, and no I, obviously I, I don't think they should be there but so no, you no, think no, the no, state sorry. should deal with them what what does that mean so the police should remove them if they're would, would you make it like a public order offense for yeah, yeah yeah i think so yeah i mean because that, that's what i'm trying to say like i don't i don't understand what the alternative would be if, if you like disregarded like banning them if you were like oh that's not a good idea if you let them be there mm. and then the obvious like follow on from that is that we would be there as well trying to stop them yeah. which is obviously more stressful for, pe yeah. for people going into the clinic <clears throat> yeah um i i just don't I, I i just think like having a buffer zone like i don't know 100 meters outside or whatever where people can are able to drive into the clinic like the, i think the thing that, that i didn't understand as well before we started doing the process outside is that these clinics have really good relationships with like taxi drivers and stuff like that so um taxi drivers are completely aware like they were so grateful to us standing outside and like stopping these people like um having any kind of interaction mm. with the women who were trying to access the clinic um and the women who worked in the clinic as well like one woman on the first day we went it was snowing um she come outside and she was like look my car's there here's my car keys if you get cold just take shifts and sit in the car oh. it was so nice she made us hot drinks she gave us biscuits it was lovely she and she turned around to these people she's like you are horrible she was like i hate you she's like blah 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 like they're definitely on side with stuff like that i just don't know what the alternative is to removing them from this from the space like and so we, should we be, we we be pursuing changing the law then is that is that something we should be demanding in well, regards to this 100 meters i mean that, i think that, that's what we're currently doing like we're currently getting council by council to to implement a um but as a na I mean, as a national demand do you think that's something i that think so be? i think like because the the pspos which are currently like being put in place mm. um i think they only last like three years or something mm. like that like it's definitely like a short-term yeah. like solution to what does PSPI stand for? Oh my god, don't Public ask me that. Public safe, yeah. safety protection order. So, yeah, exactly. Ooh, sounds about right. Well sounds done. about right, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so at the moment, it's councils that are implementing those for three years. Yeah. But you're suggesting maybe we call for a nationwide ban. Let's get it in the next Labour manifesto. Okay. I mean, okay. surely that would get cross-party support as well. You'd imagine. Yeah, it should do. It's exactly. one of those things that it's like mental health with the Tories that you know they, you know, you'd be an absolute reprobate to believe otherwise. The in Manchester, so I think I was saying to you before, ninety six councillors. There's ni ninety five a Labour. One of them is a Lib Dem, um, and ninety five out of ninety six councillors voted for the motion. Um, like it's a pop. It's, it's like everyone understands that it's an important and it's like a popular. So you've won in Manchester. So can these yeah. protesters now not come within no, 100 metres so of the in, clinic? In Manchester, it was basically in Ealing and then in Manchester, what we passed was like uh, the council would look into what we can do to stop these people like mm. approaching the clinic. So in Ealing, what's happened is that they've actually implemented the PSPO. Um, and hopefully that's what will happen in councils uh, across the country now, Manchester probably being one of the first, but... Um, no, in Manchester, it's literally just we'll look into we'll look into it for you. Is but. that their standard tactic? Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll look into it. <laughs> Any more questions, Aaron? No, 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 no. 
I think it's because it's just one of those things, isn't it, where people talk about like you know competing rights. Well, who has you know has got the right to express their opinion? What they've got a right to access healthcare, but I mean, if we you know, if we, I mean, obviously human rights. Uh, you probably think the right to bodily autonomy and personal health probably does trump the right to freedom of expression. You'd imagine. Very, I imagine many people that would say otherwise. Very, very loosely related in yeah. terms of where people are allowed to or not allowed to do stuff. What do you think about the guy, the pensioner who murdered the... the sorry, this wasn't in the notes. But there was a pensioner <laughs> who murdered a burglar. And then yeah, yeah, the yeah. burglar, all his mates have put loads of like flowers opposite his house. And now they're having a £50,000 funeral march, which is going to go by his gaff. And everyone in, in the, the newspapers is going mad because I think also they're potentially a traveler family so there's yeah. some sort of dog whistle stuff in I the like, newspapers i think it's like uh, I, I don't want to say anything sly about the fellow who like killed the guy like it's a good sentence that. <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to say anything bad about the guy who killed no him. <laughs> but like the the people i think the, the what you've got to remember is that the the past like the the fellow whose eyes has like got a family like i i essentially don't think that you should be murdered for trying to burgle someone i think that's like completely out of order but the guy who did it was obviously defending himself, whatever. Yeah. But like the people who were like ripping down the flowers and stuff, I, I think that's abhorrent. I think that's dead snide. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because obviously they could. What's the diff- What's difficult about? Well, it's it? difficult because they could have a. If he's if he's a bit traumatized, you know, an old fellow who was in self defense killed the guy. Sure. I think he then called the police afterwards. Sure. So like you know, it's obviously I don't think anyone should get murdered for burgling anyone, but he doesn't seem like. He doesn't seem like he's necessarily some trigger happy guy that shot someone as they were running Not away. Tony do you know Martin, what I mean? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then, flowers on the other side. I can kind of see it. Like that's where he, you know, when someone dies, you often leave flowers where they died. But then a huge funeral procession in front of his house. I mean, like that's pretty. Uh, it's making a statement, isn't it? Yeah. But you know, this is the thing. So first and foremost, I think the guy had a right to defend himself. Yeah, I'm not saying that the the homeowner, that the the guy who lived there, obviously, it's, yeah, it's wrong to kill somebody, but it seems proportionate. Sometimes it happens. It mm. seems proportionate. No, no, that's not... The police should. The police should obviously. Someone's going to be. Someone's going to be protesting outside my house. The police. Now. The police obviously should be involved, um, and they should ensure that nobody's killed somebody else maliciously. But yeah, I think it's pretty clear that it's not homicide. It's self-defense. Somebody unlawfully entered his house to burglarize him. But then on the, at the same time, I saw a picture of a guy sort of tramping on these on these flowers. Yeah, yeah that was a bit weird lot. as well. And you think, this guy's got kids. He's got four kids, I think. And what you're doing is actually making the situation worse. Because yeah. if they are a bit of a naughty family, they'll feel rightly... Uh, well, no, if they are, that's what that's what the dog whistle stuff is about, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They could be... Because normally, you say, well, it's just a funeral procession. He's died. But the point is, they're saying, well, actually, it's... It's a symbol of something else. Let's accept that, okay? Let's say that what the media is saying is correct. Well, then this is surely the worst thing to do. You're aggravating tensions which were already there. Uh, I think clearly you don't want to do that by denying them the right to have a funeral procession where they mm. see fit. So I think they should be able to, able to have a memorial wherever they like. The funeral procession should be able to go wherever they like. And then when the gentleman's, you know, had his funeral service, that's that. And, you know, the old bill needs to keep an eye on it. But, I mean, I certainly... I mean, the populist line is just—I know, which I know what you're fucking inclined to do. The populist line is just to follow the newspapers and go, "Bat them all, get them out." No, this is kind of this is kind of like David Blunkett populist style. Well, you could say if the man feels under threat, you could just say, "Just do it down a different road," you know. But it's a funeral um, procession. It's not. Or he could just go out for the day. You know yeah, what I mean? someone, t- someone take him out for yeah, the day, yeah, and then yeah. people can protect his house. Exactly. Hopefully someone's... Hopefully he's got a mate who can take him out. It's a time that calls for cool heads. And you're not saying that, it seems, in, in and around the local community and in the media. Yeah. And that, that matters most of all for these two people who've been affected the most by this, who are still alive, right? Which is the... Uh, which is this elderly couple. I think it's just one guy, isn't it? They're a couple. Or is it wife? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But also in the same vein, I don't know if you've seen um, in Liverpool currently, there's um, protests going on outside the children's hospital, Alder Hay. Um, so a little kid has been basically is uh, he's been in hospital since late 2016 um, his family are trying to I can't I don't know the specifics of what's wrong with him but his family are trying to take him home from hospital and um, Alder Hay are basically being like no 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 he needs to stay he's too sick uh, we're not going to turn off 
his life machine and they keep taking it to court blah 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 but currently there's a huge protest going on outside the hospital they've got like a bouncy castle um have you, yeah, i heard yeah, yeah, about yeah, a bouncy yeah. castle outside a hospital yeah and they're basically like there's like obviously like uh rumors like going around like oh any like one who goes into work like nurses and stuff they're calling like scorm and stuff like that like um but that would obviously come into the same remit like are you allowed to like protest outside a hospital or whatever like it's a sick a sick children's ward and all these kids are like bouncing on a, a bouncy <laughs> castle outside which is obviously like harsh maybe we just need some sort of blanket ban about protests outside places where yeah, people exactly. are, are have getting medical <laughs> treatment <laughs> although that would fuck up the junior doctor strike wouldn't it like, uh, no blanket yeah. bans on protests except the junior doctor navarro media is not calling for a blanket <laughs> ban on protests yeah, if, it inhibits, <laughs> if it inhibits people's ability to access health care i mean it's i think it's oh yeah i mean that situation mm-hmm. might be one yeah all right that was a bit of a detour but if you're making children the of banning hostile, depressed i mean that's something let's have some decency <laughs> yeah, i think yeah, yeah. should knock some sentences won't them. someone think of the children <laughs> well yeah right <laughs> Uh, let's get up Beth Redmond's piece from earlier in the year. Uh, tell me when it's on the screen. You know, I can't see it. Uh, I think it's there. It doesn't matter anyway. Sound, I'll, I'll start reading it. I'm going to read the. F- oh, yeah, that's true. Will the sound go? Uh, the left if you'd just left school or even vaguely interested in radical politics it made sense to join some sort of group and a lot of the time it was the case you'd join whoever got their claws into you first i speak to 18 19 and even 20 year olds now who take the piss that people my age 24 were ever involved in organizations like the awl the swp or the sp but it was normal then and in the absence of socialist labor and thank god now we have it it's common sense to join that instead I'm jealous of anyone who's young enough to have bypassed that pessimistic movement. I'm surprised so many of us have come through the other side of it full of hope with a willingness to keep moving forward whilst recognising that there are still people to keep up, to keep at arm's length who are stuck in that past age desperately trying and failing to catch up. Up until recently, a hangover of the same behaviour was visible in Manchester where I now live. Meetings in boring rooms on boring topics that we'd all talked about a hundred times before with a top table of people who might have looked impressive on paper, but we'd all known what they were going to say before they said it. It's really worth reading the whole article. Uh, I very much enjoyed it when I read it, when it first got released. Uh, There's a fair bit of vitriol in that, I'd say. Uh, What motivated you to write this, well, critique of certain strains within the left, but then obviously it moves on to a celebration of what the left currently is now which we'll move on to as well i think that um well as it, as it says in the article like i basically like grew up uh politically um kind of in this era before corbyn was elected before a radical labor government was even feasible um i'll, I'll come on to that more in a second because i guess it is quite interesting to hear because a lot of people i think can can relate to it but more of the positive end of stuff that currently now what we're doing in manchester is so exciting and what we can see like happening in in, like pockets across the country like we just we just do so much stuff like across like uh like a number of different kind of categories of like culture and life that people enjoy um and um it's just so so kind of refreshing to see like uh people being positive about politics rather than as mentioned in in the blog post just being kind of like i don't know you just used to see t- people turn up to to meetings like the same faces to the same issues and you'd see name people- names no <laughs> <laughs> name names you probably know them all anyway Aaron. i think you're talking about me that's why i said it no i'm not at all. <laughs> oh. no, i'm joking what, what, what kind of Not issues? Not everything's about you, Aaron. Oh, God. <laughs> um, you, you went and said it. No, what, 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 what issues? So you, t- you won't get know. invited back after that statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm very sympathetic to everything, everything Beth is saying, of course. <laughs> so what issues? Um, so you'd see, I, I don't know. So the, the, the crux of it, and I think what you're, you're trying to get down to, I used to be a member of the AWL. Um, Which is short for? The Alliance for Workers' Liberty. 
which is a very small uh, Trotskyist group on the left who um, I think maybe um, have been kind of um ugh, they've been they've been around the left for and they they seem seemingly longer than like the swp now currently because of their stance on labor like they've always like wanted to to try and get involved in the labor party and stuff like that um so they were an entryist group that were expelled in i think 1992 when they were called socialist organizer so, yeah then they changed their name to the awl yeah uh, they were sort of by association excluded from the labor party but it seems there's now an understanding that the prescription list is uh, doesn't exist anymore right. but anyway yeah yeah, yeah um yeah so i can't remember what i was saying i'm oh, sorry sorry that was no, my it's fault fine. Uh, you're, t- you're describing the awl and your experience in them okay um so i i basically got involved when i was maybe 21 i think so 20 21 uh when i was at a university which uni were you at um i initially went to essex and then i transferred to john moore's uh, I didn't finish. I just did two years at uni, and then I, I hated it, so I just left. Um, but um, yeah, I think that they because because they're so small, um, and they are very very well practiced in specific routines, um, in terms of like packing out meetings, um. Um, like the, I, I feel like there was a, like a standard culture before like uh, being involved in left politics was kind of popular and like in and stuff like that without meaning to sound patronising at all um, which not that they kind of curated the the methods and the structures and stuff like that but they were very very good at all of that stuff like in terms of getting involved in like NUS conference mm. and stuff like that um, and what we've tried to do with Manchester Momentum is kind of like smash that structure a little bit. Like with Momentum, I think there's no need to be having meetings every week to decide kind of policy and to, to go forward on and stuff like that. I just, I, I think that's pointless. I think it's like asking for arguments which don't need to be there. Um, so we basically like focused on a like internal Labour Party organising but also like culture stuff so we organised like film screenings we organised like discos like really good parties Um, we've this got, we've actually got some posters yeah we have so posters are really good so this okay. this first one was designed by um, Glenn Cutwork who is a graphic designer in Manchester great, isn't it very very nice um, and these next two were designed by Johnny Tomlinson, who is from Then There Was Us Collective. So Unsociable Hours is basically a film club that we host every month. Um, uh, and that's basically like for people who work shifts, people who have childcare issues and can't always make uh, evening meetings and stuff like that. So we put a film club up on Wednesdays. Uh, our Italo Disco night inspired by John McDonald's love for Italo Disco. Does John McDonald love Italo Disco? He fucking loves it, mate. Is it? Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. How did yeah. we find that out? He wrote about you in a Guardian article once. No. Honestly. That's Good. amazing. That fucking is amazing. Google I like it, yeah. him even more. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> I'm just imagining him dancing to Italo Disco. I know. Uh, we were trying to get him to come, but I don't think he will. Um, but yeah, we do, do stuff like that. Like this Sunday, for instance, where we're all like in collaboration with the Morning Star, loads, like a hundred of us are walking up Kinder Scout, um, which is like a hill in the Peak District, just going on a, a big hike. So we do stuff like that. Like it's actually fun that people want to go mm. to. Like, and I think that like cultural stuff, like makes people form a relationship with you. Um, it makes them want to stay involved in politics. It makes them more interested in the stuff that you've got to say about politics. Um, and in in what in in essence, what we want them to do, which is like turn up to Labour Party, CLP, mm. AGMs, and stuff like that, they'll trust you when you ask them to do that. Um, so like, it's fun, it's great, but also like, it's worth it in the long run. Do you mm. know what I mean? So obviously, this is a vision of momentum that uh, me and Aaron very much backed about a year a year or so ago when there was the internal debate about what momentum mm. should be should mm. it be an organization that meets in sort of small meetings small monthly meetings as a kind of parallel organization to the labor party where you have your own factional battles and your motions and your debates or should it be a very different kind of organization which doesn't try and replicate any of those same structures and can focus you say manchester momentum focus one on 
organizing inside the Labour Party and the other on sort of like mm. these cultural events to bring people in. Um, I wanted to ask a bit about in the piece, it seems like it's not just a piece about this is what used to be the case. And this is what is currently the case, you know, so the left used to be sort of small and sectarian. And now that the left sort of outward looking and big, uh, that the article seemed like it was placed in a bit of a struggle. So I felt like you were arguing with potentially other people around Manchester Momentum or sort of like you were saying, this particular vision of politics should be defended against people that critique it. Um, so I wondered if you could explain a little bit about what criticisms you've come in for okay. as part of Manchester Momentum. I think the reason it probably comes across like that is because... Um, so a Manchester Momentum itself is, uh, like had to defend itself um against the people it kind of took over from essentially but also because i recognize that in um i'll come on to this a bit more in a second but in other parts of the country there are definitely definitely places where um the people who um i'm kind of talking about in the article are in a stronger posi position than those in manchester so um m more able to d defend it more able to kind of um if it is i don't know taken over for want of a better word um they're able to come back stronger um that th that's th i think that's probably the reason it, it it comes across like that but in manchester um i think basically the, the criticism the criticisms we come across were that um we were all like when the committee was taken over we were too young uh, as in we were too inexperienced to be like heading up like a certain section of the labor movement we were stalinists uh, we why were, were you called stalinists um was it the what of your politics or was it how you did the politics how we did the politics or was it the memes do you make stalinist memes no <laughs> so it's the how, it's how, you, how you did politics with stalinists yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, I I don't really get why it would be, but like I, I, I they they wouldn't have known anything particularly about our politics, so I assume it was how we yeah. did it. In that we completely took were able to completely take over a committee from them. So which, being effective made you Stalinist. Yeah, exactly, which they weren't happy about. Um, and I think they called us hipsters a lot, which was really funny. No shame in that. No, I mean I'm not, but yeah, fine. <laughs> Um, so they ca they came out with like a lot of kind of mad insults and for for a while we like ended up reading like really really long like Facebook statuses from these people that didn't really make any sense to us but were basically insulting us because we were young hipster Stalinists. So let me get straight, they were they were angry with you because you were young, effective, and providing an attractive politics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh dear um but i think to be fair like a lot of the people who were criticizing us have definitely come around to um like our idea about things like initially i imagine they were just very kind of shocked um that anyone had managed to kind of like come up against them mm. um but because we are so effective now like we managed to get a hundred people at least to every event that we put on i've been yeah i've been to your events there yeah excellent. exactly um they're great like we're very like not to like toot my own horn or toot moment manchester momentum's own horn or whatever but we're like we're well we're, we're well respected we do things well um it's fucking rare to be a left-wing organization that puts on parties that people actually want to go to yeah exactly. Like, i think that shouldn't be uh underestimated how significant it is yeah, that yeah, someone's yeah, yeah. managed to pull I mean, that off this is and this is something this would be like a criticism from another part of the left which isn't like the crap well it is actually i would put a lot of it in the crank left but they're not trotskyists or they're sort of part of the new libertarian left and they always talk about and obviously not all these people are cranks but i think some of them are and they always talk about oh you know we need to create child care and crashes and all this stuff on the left I agree with all of that clearly but then there is never a talk, and they talk about social labour and affects and the importance of connections, but then they never talk about things like club nights mm. or bars or restaurants, about the complete absence of social space where people's emotional needs are met. And those emotional needs are just as important as childcare, you know, uh, reproductive labour and other aspects of life. We, we go mad without it. And left politics that succeeds would have to meet those needs effectively, which is what you guys seem to be doing very, very well. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the criticisms I think we get is that um, we're not 
uh, like we are kind of like anti-intellectual and we like uh disagree with like having um like all member meetings on like uh, things that people can discuss we're just interested in parties and that's not the case at all like um we put on all member meetings we put on meetings to do with like like we've got um i don't know if you know the guy john john borton who wrote uh municipal dreams um the rise and fall of council housing oh, no, um, read it. yeah it's, it's just come out it's great um he's coming on the 5th of may to do a big talk about housing or housing is one of the biggest issues we've got affordable housing in manchester at the minute um so it's not that we're, we're like anti-intellectual or anti-theory or anything like that but um i just think there's compared to like the old left who in my experience were only interested in putting on meetings that would make themselves look good mm. um uh getting involved in kind of projects that um would allow them to recruit members to their own organization as opposed to like actually like uh, appreciating kind of cultural things for their i don't know artistic value mm. or anything like that um i think the the difference is that there's like a, fin- a synthesis of the two that needs to, needs to be acknowledged rather than just kind of having meetings because then you can say on the internet that you've had the meeting do you know what i mean can i mean so like we've tried to do this at navara right which is which i think is what you guys have done which is i think the sort of the the thing that should be pursued and obviously people are watching this and they'll be in god knows where for instance bournemouth obviously something like bournemouth you need to create a, a good interesting radical scene in manchester and london it's slightly easier yeah obviously they're bigger cities you know a history of radical politics large uh university populations large populations of recent graduates large numbers of people with time but i think like the the way you do it is create this pole of attraction which is what we try to do in navara and when you are bringing in people because you want them to join an exclusive group you're always therefore necessarily limiting just how far that pole of attraction can go and i think the strength of these kinds of projects or organizations is they say you can like us you can dislike us fine uh but i think what you guys are doing in terms of on the one hand creating an intellectual well, you, know, you might not like that ideological pole of attraction of course yes that comes about through the reading groups the the big p politics but it also comes about through the informal forms of what we call social capital building right whether that's film nights whether it's nightclubs whether it's whatever bars and this for me if you would if somebody would say what's the one thing you'd love for the left in this country it would be to have you know 200 worker-owned bars uh, left leading. They don't have to be labour supporters. Oh, that's big 200. Well, yeah, two, across the country. <laughs> many, yeah. Across the country. So, like, every major town or city had one. Mm. They don't have to be labour-affiliated, nothing. But it's about creating a hub for ideas and where people can examine, you know, a politics which is obviously uh, under-examined in the mainstream. Uh, okay. Hugely important. And, and it's at odds with this kind of historically Trotsky sto- sort of idea of building the party. I mean, we've we've spoken about it before on the but I think it's one, it's down to sort of like the the good work you've done in Manchester, but also we're sort of lucky enough to live in a moment when the left is sort of for structural reasons and also because the leadership of the Labour Party is sort of like an attractive place to be. So being on the left often felt like you were fighting a losing battle. And I think that did often make people a little bit inward looking, a little bit defensive. And a lot of energy was put into making sure the people that are currently in the movement are exactly how you want them to be mm. and sort of like... Uh, an inward process of trying to perfect the movement but in putting so much emphasis and effort into that you kind of forget what you're actually there for and it's not a unity project you don't put- right you build a bigger organization through like uh conjoining two or three smaller organizations like there was the left unity party yeah, instance, yeah, yeah. which was started immediately preceding uh, the revival of of labor i'm not dissing those people nobody knew strategically what was the right thing to do but that's the ex- sort of historical way it's proceeded, really. Mm. Since yeah, left. U- we need left unity. We need left unity. It's, it's Bring what all lots these of people said at the beginning of together. the Corbyn movement as well. It's sort of like we need left unity. We can't have sectarianism. But then you end up sort of with the lowest common denominator, which is a sort of like se- 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 strange mm. socialist platform that yeah. might appeal to everyone. I mean, socialism's great, but a strange sort of like particular type of socialist way of organising and platform, which can bring in everyone on the radical left, but not really many other people. Mm. Well, the thing is, the strongest materials sometimes are those that can stretch, right? It's not just about... Ooh, I like that. I mean, it's, but it's <laughs> true. Ooh, elastic. You need some give. That's right. No, no, but you need some give. Like, for instance, like, you know... It's a, like a wobbly bridge, right? You can't, ha- you can't be brittle. 
Precisely. Oh, yeah. There's a suspension yeah. bridge. Maybe there's some sort of like maybe it's a, you can imagine some compass event like Manchester Momentum John is a suspension Harris. bridge of politics. <laughs> nah, I'm not signing off on that. But you need, but shit, you, need you need some you know you, you look need great some, on your poster. <laughs> you need you need some gear. And uh, and that that does necessarily require dissensus. So can I just say before we carry on, somebody said that I was dissing Plan C when I was talking about childcare and creches. I wasn't. Actually, I think childcare and creches are hugely important. And I wasn't dissing Plan C either because they have this monthly, uh, not monthly, annual thing where people go away sort of like for an event for a couple of days. It looks brilliant. That's precisely what I'm talking about as well, right? So we need yeah, more- Yeah, Ben, it's great. We need more commie camps. Mm. Yeah. Uh, as well as more bars and cinema nights, etc. So no, I wasn't mentioning Plan C. Good, That's good, probably good like one, that. one, one of the good things that Plan C does is free childcare at every event. <laughs> I think it's we're, good. We're on YouTube, so we don't have to worry about that kind of thing. <laughs> you can watch it with your kids. You can watch it with your grandparents. We no, we, we're an accessible office. As long as they don't lift. mind swearing. That was a, that was a, you know, that was a, a no go for us. You've, you're at the Chalton Club. You've got an accessible kind of space, haven't you? Chalton Social Club, yeah. Can you what? talk about, a bit about the Chalton? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 As an addendum to Manchester Momentum, what is the Chalton so, Social Club? Chalton Socialist Club uh, is basically like a group of us um, who were really kind of naffed off, pissed off with uh, people who would turn up to Labour Party branch meetings and never come back again. Um, and when you'd ask them why, they'd just go, look, I'm not being funny, but it was fucking boring. Like, I just don't know what was going on. Like, I just, I, why would I sit through three hours of that? Um, so we kind of decided that it was really important to try and make those people come back again. So no disrespect to our local Labour Party. Like, our, label, our local Labour Party is pr- pretty good. Um, but we started setting up gigs. Uh, the first one we did was back in November. We had Steel and Sheep who are a good band from Liverpool, um, do a gig. We had maybe 200 people turn up, listen to us talk about um, what socialism is and then listen to the band. And then in December, we had a big party with Dutch Uncles um, and Aldous R.H., who were quite big. Um, and they talked about how uh, their dad, one of their dads was standing to be a councillor in Stockport and talked about how important it was to elect a Labour government, stuff like that. We maybe had like 350 people there. Um, and we were basically just trying to espouse to people that it is so important for you to turn up to your branch meetings. But look, we're not all fucking boring yeah. anoraks who um, want to sit in meetings and talk about shite all the time. And you guys rent this? What's the, so the space itself? So this, the space itself is, is our local Irish club. Mm-hmm. So we rent it for free. They just get all the money from the bar. Um and yeah, it's boss. Uh, it's central to our local branch, Chalton. Um, and everyone knows where it is. Uh, it's got a good selection of beers on. That's sick. Yeah, this is what we need more of. Like in in uh, in Bournemouth, uh, obviously the Conservative Party's dying a death, but there's still five or six Conservative. But they're still put on great parties. No, <laughs> but I had mates. You have to understand, I had mates when they turned eighteen. The cheapest place to buy beer. Oh, was a Conservative club. Absolutely, and yeah. you'd have to be a member of the Conservative Party. And okay, let's say one in ten people that did that would get heavily politicised by it. Yeah, but it's something. And, uh, and well, that's, that's a great idea. And that's when you've got fuck all to provide politically. So imagine if, you know, we imagine if, you know, people will be going, oh, Bastani, people, not everybody drinks, whatever. Snooker clubs, whatever. And that's the end for. Well, that's another point. I think that something that the left have tended to do, or I've seen, is sort of like, because some people don't drink, you can't have a party. Yeah. And it's like, well, why don't we have a party and then also do something that's alcohol free instead of sort of this idea that to do anything that doesn't include everyone even if it's just by choice that they don't like drinking is somehow oppressive it's sort mm. of like if we want to have a party we're going to have a party but then we should also recognize that we're also going to have to have some kind of other event as well of course like a picnic we'll do all that and then we kick these cranks out <laughs> <laughs> oh talking of cranks let's get into the gossip so okay you used to be quite involved in the awl i want to know about your experience i want to know how it was for you <laughs> i want to know why you left but let's get there after sort of like okay you know, why did you join about... right. yeah why did you join actually that's the first question um, isn't it? i've got I the ju- order all wrong here <laughs> <laughs> why did you li- tell us why you left and then tell us why you joined it's like um quentin tarantino nah i'm gonna do it in fucking chronological order because it's gonna confuse me um i joined because um oh my god why is that are you gonna drink the beer <laughs> no no you have it oh. <laughs> <laughs> we all rocks the fucking last show what? <laughs> 
Well, I've, I've got a new... When you Me need and to, Michael are going... When you need to burp, yeah, you just need to turn around. As long as you don't burp into the mic, it's fine. And don't drink just before you want to speak. Yeah, exactly. I'm getting a real pro now. I'm, get, I'm, getting, a, getting, I'm, a I'm pro. getting a real I'm really pro. professional. When I drink on set while we're doing a live recording, I know when to not burp. <laughs> okay, sorry, Beth. Right, okay. Um, I joined... Um, I can't remember. This sounds really bad, but I joined because uh, my boyfriend at the time was it was in the organisation. I thought you were going to say because you fancied someone. Yeah, or something like it's that. bad that, isn't it? Um, but eventually became kind of um, really into their feminist politics. I think the AWL has um, better than other kind of uh, groups on the left. They have a like a really like strong commitment to to feminist politics. I think anyway. In what way? Um, they're just kind of um, I don't know. It's kind of like a pro sex work. Tra- yeah, unionized exactly. Sex workers. Uh, come on, tell me some of the other positions. I want some of the headlines. I'm I'm Because obviously that's something that splits lots of people on the left, right? Yeah, no, no, it does. I'm just trying to think now, like it sounds it sounds it sounds mad, but um trying to think what attracted me to them all that time going I'm struggling. <laughs> I think actually I think the AWL are actually quite good on a lot of labour movement stuff, traditionally in terms of like the grassroots organising. And they've come in for a lot of um uh flack elsewhere. The foreign policy stuff I completely disagree yeah. with. Mm. But they were historically a lot better as well on the identity politics stuff yeah. than, say, the SWP, right? I mean, one of the reasons they're spoken about more than other groups is not actually because they're worse than the other Trotskyist groups. It's because they have been successful at sort of embedding themselves in actually quite decent movements, sometimes that was sort of helpful. So it's sort of like there's... I think the cinema workers yeah. union sort of like they've been quite instrumental in and that's been very helpful and positive. Mm. Um, they're also involved in the student movement and then in momentum and then sometimes it gets problematic. But we're going to go back to your story. Sorry. I, just, I, th- I think one of the things that um, lo- lots of people like, because I agree with probably everything you've said there, but one of the things that um, I'm probably one of the main reasons that I ended up leaving was that they they tend to have a habit of kind of, so when when I when I was in the AWL, I uh, not at the time, but in hindsight, feel like because I am a young woman and because I've got a regional accent and I don't have a southern accent, obviously, um, not necessarily exploited as too strong a word, but definitely feel like I had more weight on my shoulders than anyone else, um, kind of in my sphere of the organization to do stuff. So um, I've written about this before, but for instance, like I, so when I lived in London um, and I'd buy like tickets for gigs, like I'm really into music, I'm really into like football and stuff like that. I'd buy tickets to music um, events or like gigs or whatever uh, to be told that like, I wasn't allowed to go, like hands down, I wasn't allowed to go to stuff like that. And I'd be like, I literally just want a night off. like. Mm. I, I, like whatever uh, and end up having a full-blown argument with someone in the office about like whether I was allowed to go to like in my eyes now something cultural or not but it at, at the time it was literally just like going to something that wasn't doing something political do you know what I mean mm. um so why wouldn't they let you go why, what was because there was rationale? something there was something more important for me to be doing um the I don't know a meeting I had to chair or but this is on your night off well, no, not not necessarily. It was like I, t- to be honest, I don't think I had a night off. So you're constantly working. I see. Yeah, wow. yeah, amazing. Um, like I work full time now, and I think it's like half of what I worked when when I was there at the time for like less than half the pay or whatever. Um, and but I I think with and I obviously I don't know if this is the same with with other left groups but I think there's a, a string of like young women that that happens to within these organizations like they get kind of um initially with me it was like I, look I'm like a, a a young woman with like a a mildly scouse accent you know what I mean like I don't get like attention anywhere unless it's like for someone to be nasty to me oh, um, really <laughs> yeah um so even in London yeah, you, you like, don't hear no because you don't hear very many regional English accents in London. I've always that's always I've always struck you know struck me as very odd. West Country, Scouse, Manic Union, Geordie, whatever. You just never hear it. Yeah, well, no people like assume you're like a thief or whatever. Right. Mm. Um, so it was 
it was kind of like uh I, not necessarily like an ego boost or whatever but like it was a bit like oh my god look like someone's like actually like taking note of what i'm saying about something um and that kind of like snowballed into like them being like look you need to do x y and z uh you need to do it because uh and kind of fetishizing the accent a little bit uh, which is awful um you need to do this because you're like working class or whatever um and you get to the point where you just be like yeah okay yeah like fine fine i'll do that but um there's like a i think there's like a line of women i'm not going to name them but there's like like a line of women who i feel like had all of that weight put on their shoulders until the point where they like burn out and broke um and then they just moved on to the next one Mm. um i I don't know if they're still doing that now i'd like i i'm not sure but like initially when i got involved in the awl it was it was kind of the the, their feminist politics are good but then you you see you see this kind of happening um and obviously everyone else can kind of see it from the outside and you Mm. get people saying to you like fucking chill out like you're doing too much Mm. like these are like working into your bone or whatever and you go no shut up like it's fine and until the point where you snap and then and you leave yeah exactly (laughs) i think that's something that happens a lot in sort of like a paid position in any left organization because it's because obviously lots of people are working voluntarily and so if you're paid then people are like well they're the paid ones so they have to do all the dog's body work and they have to feel sort of like privileged just by the fact they're getting a wage but it probably has an added element when you've got such a sort of like ideologically uh an ideology that demands 100 percent commitment all the time can I, I mean, also, I wouldn't say it's just limited to paid work. I'd say it's probably um, related to a certain genre of activism, which is just constantly doing stuff, always on. You can never take time off. And it obviously, it can bleed from if you're doing... There was no line for Beth between paid and unpaid from the sound. Yeah, of exactly. But even with people who have a full-time job, and then obviously their activism's unpaid, they fall into that same trap. Mm. And this is why the Labour Party or Momentum or institutions generally or Navara, for people involved in Navara, are really important. Because if you're having a tough week or you want to take a time out, you can do that. And if we don't have institutions which can do this, and this is, the, I think, my critique of not just Trotskyism, but also sort of left libertarian organising, you know, uh, housing movements, squatter stuff, like you need normality from mm. time to time. You need to be able to just buy yourself some new clothes or to watch a football match or to hang out with your mates or go on a date or watch the telly. And these organisations, rather this form of organising, doesn't really make a space or acknowledge that. Um, So yeah, it's something I think which the libertarian and the sort of the trot left historically have made that same mistake. Yeah, because you think... Well, I suppose on the trot left, it's that you need commitment to the cause because that's the only thing that's going to bring about revolution. And on the libertarian left, it's sort of like a fetishism about democratic decision making and the idea that... Because the the society you want is one where you feel like political decision making is super empowering and people should always want to be in meetings. And I've been in a phase in my life where one of my favourite things to do was be in sort of like exciting meetings in the student movement. Now I hate them. Mm. And It's not not just that. The thing with the the trots, it's like building a party, building an organisation, constantly trying to recruit people. Um, and perhaps counterintuitively, you have the same issue with anarchos in so much as it's prefigurative politics. Mm. And every single waking moment can possibly be a prefiguring of the world that is to come. You know, we're building every day a new world and the shell of the old. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope that's true, but fuck me. Like, you need some time out, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, another reason why people should get involved in mainstream political organisations, be it trade unions, political parties... Sorry to break it to you. I Hashtag mean, no, join Labour. Most people, no, no, no. But we don't need to. Most people know yeah. that. Yeah. There's a reason yeah. why people join these organisations because, like, that is not a sustainable genre of activism. You kill people, not literally. <laughs> <laughs> not literally. Can I just add? It happens. You metaphorically <laughs> kill people, and the thing is, once somebody snaps, even young people, yeah. if they're in their early twenties, late twenties, they work the bone for four or five years. If you if you break them, sometimes they can't come back. Mm. As, I don't know if that was if you've you've encountered people that like I certainly have. Yeah, definitely. They were political animals for four or five years, and then they don't do it again for twenty five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad. Yeah, because yeah, like the often the, the the people who get put forward for or put themselves forward for for those kinds of jobs and stuff like that are like one of the some of the most impressive people you'll ever meet, and then all of a sudden they'll disappear and you won't hear from them again for 
for many, many years. And yeah, it, it's sad. Someone's just said Navarra Rave. I like it. Uh, we should advertise our party. Although oh, yes. I've forgotten the date. Can you remember the date? I think it's May the 11th. 11th. I think it's the 11th of May. Let me get this up. Yeah, We're going to wrap up in five. Maybe we should yeah. do some question, questions. Oh, yeah, let's do some questions. Questions for Beth in the comments. Oh, God. Oh, no, no. Somebody was saying, were you single a second ago? Are you messing? That's what? a question. They never asked me that. <laughs> Are you actually joking? Yeah, go on. No one ever comes on to me oh, ever in my entire life. And I it happens in the Navarra comments. Fucking hell, my life is sad. Oops, send... <laughs> hey, this, this guy might be really good. Look, Can really... you upload a pic to the comments? Really hunky. <laughs> Upload a pic to the comments. Hunky! Really, How might, old are you? Be, Fucking hell! Be, you know. All right, Dad. Well, I've, never, well, I've never referred to a bloke. You know, I don't often sort of go on the on the chirps for men. Hunky? So my apologies if my adjectives aren't right. Come on, questions, questions. Oh, what was the book you mentioned, Beth? I assume that was one about council housing. Oh, comment um, again if you. It, so it's a guy called John Borton. B O U G H T O N. Uh, municipal dreams the rise and fall of council housing it's fucking boss we'll get him on navarra i'm sure are you sure he's great he's such a lovely man honestly these are all sarah kundi said you single beth mate <laughs> oh my god you fucking got me excited because i thought it's it was not, a fellow not, no, sarah 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 kundi. Kundi. It was at the start. It no there's sarah loads kundi. of other people as well <laughs> so uh yes sarah i am uh ba- bazaar wants to know if you're single bazaar send a pic in the comments okay blur or oasis Kind of a retro question uh, as well. Oasis. All right. That's probably controversial. Um, but... she, she lives in Manchester. She's going to say blur? Really? Uh, someone's someone's say, written... It is on the 11th, by the way. Maybe somebody can... Oh, add... yeah. What's the details? Yeah, I'm going to put them in the comments now. It's on the 11th. Navarra so Media. Fifth, fifth birthday bash. <laughs> Matt or Jackie, what does that mean? Oh, my, so my cats are called uh, Matt Kings and Jackie Walker. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Matt what? My old, my old mate, my old housemate was called Matt King, so he moved to Paris. So I moved, I mean... Named... <laughs> you named your cat after Jackie Walker? Yeah, it was by accident. <laughs> like, it was a joke at first, and then she, like, every time you go, Jackie... Does she know this? Yeah, she turns her head around like that, and she, like, knows you're talking about... Not not the actual Jack, the cat knows, but not Jackie Walker. Herself. Jackie Walker, no. maybe she does now. <laughs> Are you commenting? Because I can never see you on your phone, but no, I'm not it's on not my phone, her. it's over there. But... So it's somebody pretending to be Beth. Oh, it's someone oh, pretending to be Beth Redmond. Oh, right. what are they saying? Well, no, they're saying things that would be sort of like what you would say. So they're like sort what? Of, well, they advertise the next <laughs> animal, ma- animal abuse. Well, they advertise the next. <laughs> they advertise the next Manchester Momentum or members meeting. It's probably which be, Sarah like, Weston or Alice Edwards. Oh, right. Arseholes. Um, Robbie Fowler or Mohamed Salah? Uh, oof, Salah, because Ma- Robbie Fowler is a fucking horrible property developer now. Oh, really? Yeah, he's an arsehole. So, Salah. Uh, oh, does momentum need more democracy? Serious question there. Uh, yeah, a bit, yeah. How we go into that a bit more? Um, I guess it could do with uh, people deciding um, who runs for stuff a bit more. Like, at the Slates, minute. you mean slates? Yeah. So who runs for sort of like the Labour NEC? Or even like momentum candidates for kind of MP positions and stuff like that. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of any input that the members get to stuff like that. Oh, Alice is saying which one then? And she's saying fake Beth. Uh, any musical recommendations like Dutch Uncles? Um, I don't even understand that question, so I'm assuming it's directed it's at you. It's not my favourite band. Oh, Dutch Uncles are? No, 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 they're we, not at all. We've got a question here. A sovereign conference for momentum. Ooh. A what? A sovereign conference. What does that mean? Like Labour Party conference, a conference oh. which is sovereign. Yeah, you're just repeating the word, but you're not saying Sometimes what it means. When you, <laughs> you just put them in different <laughs> orders, babe. Uh, Labour Party conference. So a sovereign conference means the ultimate authority rests in a conference, right? Which will usually be sort of like delegate based, and, and no, no one's allowed like, to. I don't, I don't. I don't get the get why you'd repeat. Uh, Labour Party structures. You've got like, the Labour Party for that, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it can that. actually control the government. Exactly. The country. Um, good question here. Does Jackie walk a crap in the garden or in the box? In the garden. <laughs> That's bad. That is cool. It's, just, it's a cat. And who, you, who are you voting for in the NCG? Um, I'm voting for Liz Hayden, Nav, and um, the other two people on their slate. I can't remember. I'm not names. even familiar. This is for your neck of the woods, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even familiar with that. 
Of course, Navarro is strictly impartial when it comes to matters of internal party democracy and any political organisation. I, I've never understood the whole Navarro's impartial. Well, it's not. Actually. I mean, I'm joking. We're not the fucking BBC, but we're not we? going OTT either. <laughs> I mean, we did literally a podcast saying why a coup <laughs> was politically correct. Yeah. Um, JJJ Je, Je, Je has asked if I'm single. Send a pic. I mean, ev- everyone who's asked about whoever's single... If you, you you want picked, right? If anyone's yeah, saying that you're single, that yeah. DM me. Oh, these questions are really good. I'm the really guy, single. The guys probably want to wrap up. These are really good. Um, oh, sorry. What's your, Ooh, what's your thinking on Andy Burnham? Uh, lovely eyelashes. As a politician? <laughs> I think he's the best looking Labour politician. Yeah, he's fit, but he's a bit... Um, middle of the road? He's like a hunky... F- well, he's like he Fireman Sam, him. but real. Oh, yeah, he looks like a fire. That's true. <laughs> Fireman Sam. Well, he looks like Fireman Sam, the character, who was also a little bit bland as well, I think, but sort of like agreeable. Agreeable? As you can imagine Fireman <laughs> well, Sam that's... being like... Uh, Harsh. Core group jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. As, I mean, it, was, as it was called. Have you not heard this? No. So the, so the sort of coup, the chicken coup in 2016, yeah. they had the, the coup, the conspirators, had categorised everybody in the Labour Parliamentary Labour Party, you know, they put them in certain groups. And Andy Burnham was in a group by himself. As uh, or maybe it was the Corbyn team that did this. I don't, I don't think they did. Basically, he was putting core group jellyfish. Yeah, understandable. So nobody really knew what he stood exactly. for. Exactly, except that he uses Maybelline mascara. Well, that was his. Oh, does he? Probably. Well, I mean, what was intelligent? <laughs> I mean, it, it, they are amazing. It made <laughs> sense for the time where he was up and coming because I mean, he looked at politics in the nineties and the early noughties and he said, "Look, ideology doesn't matter. What matters is looking." reasonably attractive and being relatable and he made himself i don't know can you make yourself a re- anyway he turned out reasonably attractive and quite relatable mm. but then politics changed and people actually cared what you believed and what you stood yeah. for and then it didn't work Got very well for him although i suppose mayor of manchester's not bad yeah uh, postman pat or fireman sam i've often wondered the same thing red or myself. blue liverpool red obviously what do you think about everton one word you. describe everton a single word blue shite <laughs> Um, a good comment here this is a good one I remember this one Andy Burnham looks like the mayor of a Lego city yeah it's true yeah, that's kind of true yeah it is uh, Beth Redmond you've asked yourself why did the Skripals get sick as in like whoever's logged on as Beth Redmond has asked that question yeah. <laughs> uh, it was uh, bad salmon and ZZ's yeah bad salmon and ZZ's <laughs> I've never trusted that place <laughs> This is what fucking Edo's going to pick up. <laughs> yeah. Navarra's now saying that the script was had food poisoning from salmon. <laughs> oh, dear. And we fucking sent... How many diplomats have we sent home for that bad salmon? Seven, 74 Loads? diplomats 74. on the basis of bad Loads. salmon. Fucking hell. Yeah. Any more cues? Um, who's behind the Dan Hodges account? Simon Hedges. I don't know who they are. Dan Hodges. I don't know, who's Simon Hedges? Simon Hedges is sort of like the fake Dan Hodges. Very right. good Twitter account. Simon Hedges following. is my mate Rob White. That's him. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is, is he... Is that allowed to be public? Yeah, is, that, is that breaking news? <laughs> We've just broadcast Breaking it. news on Navarra Media. Simon <laughs> Hedges is a guy called... Rob White. Rob White. Well done, Rob. It's a good account. <laughs> uh, is the Beth online an evil Beth? Like on the Mirror Universe in Star Trek? Oh... Uh, Honestly, you stop fucking talking to me about the Star Trek. I've never seen it in my yeah. life. Uh, Simon, your Huel is a low-cost, nutritional, and environmentally conscious meal replacement. I agree with you 100%. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What? These are good. <laughs> um, I honestly think Burnham tattooed his eyeliner on to always look awake. And this reminds me of a comment that we had a week ago where somebody was insisting in the I told comments you. that Michael Walker's hair was tattooed on. It's always so <laughs> yeah, sure. I can that. confirm it fucking is. I can see it. It is tattooed on. You're right. <clears throat> uh, if it was tattooed on, I'd make my hairline just a, sort of like half an inch further yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. I'd be like, I'd just, like have some like. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Cool I would make stuff. it a little bit further. You'd have like some cool stuff going on, right? Yeah. Um, are the NUS still a bunch of scabs? Yes. Ooh. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yes, the president is, but the uh, newly elected... Um... Everyone likes the welfare officer, don't they? Oh, on Twitter. Yeah, she's great. And the sock and sit officer. Bang on. Who's the welfare, welfare officer? Eva. And uh, Amelia, what does she do? She's a postgraduate <laughs> now. She she's must be the outgoing officer. postgraduate rep, no? Yeah. Or is she, did she get re-elected? She's I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it's happened yet. But I mean, the NUS, who cares, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It's like funny, in it? It was a big deal when like the Melts were in charge of the Labour Party. Now, 
I mean, it's less of a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, what I, I don't get, I mean, this, I don't know, I, maybe no one around this table will know, but NUS used to be sort of like a battle between Labour students and kind of like the ultra left. And now, I suppose Labour students is still kind of right wing, but you'd have thought that there's a mainstream student left, Labour left sort of scene, <clears> which is quite like reasonable and could come up with some quite good candidates. And I don't understand why we don't have a Labour left NUS president yet. <laughs> I mean, I said maybe no one's going to know yeah, no, sorry, around the I table. Know. I mean, anyway. young, young people, if they're going to be involved in the Labour Party, more like what well, I would actually say, don't get involved in fucking Knowles. Get involved Obviously, yeah. in don't, branches, Just don't touch CLPs. NUS, yeah. Exactly. No, but the NUS, NUS president is like a quite a good platform, right? It's a big platform. Currently, but it's, it's like occupied by... We've got a shit-stirring question from your account, which obviously is not <laughs> No, you. you're going to ask it. It's, well, it's, it's there it's for people house, to see. It's my house, James. It definitely is. What does it say? It's, just, <laughs> it's terrible. No, it's... it's terrible. Sasha Ismail or Ed Morby? <laughs> fuck's sake what does that mean what who do i want to shag no who do you prefer as a human being <laughs> just say because no because then somebody said the same thing about michael and i so we can follow up with that i'm not answering the first one bollocks okay. i'm not answering the second one yeah, <laughs> what we're waiting for. come on <laughs> okay go on yeah. i don't know not, not who you sleep with. no of course not <laughs> um okay i think we should maybe wrap up there then yeah one final question, because it seems like a, a serious question, although I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but maybe that's because I was burping at that point. <laughs> what did the more radical movements you spoke about do well that they don't get enough credit for? What? What do you mean? Sorry. You're going to have to be more specific, Georgie. George. George. George Insel. Hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean by that. We don't know what you mean. So if people are watching this and they're, they're, they're you know, in Manchester, what's the best? How can they get in touch with Manchester Momentum? How do they get involved? Um, they can email us. They can send us a message on Facebook via our Facebook page, Manchester Momentum, uh, or get in touch on Twitter, whatever you're on. Oh, what's your Twitter? Uh, my MCR Momentum. No, but what's your personal Twitter? Oh, uh, Red Bethmond. Red Bethmond. <laughs> That's where you send your pics. Yeah, please. Uh, and you can also ask keep it about appropriate. Keep when it clean. Nah, don't keep it clean. Don't keep it appropriate. Keep it clean. Come on. Send the dirty ones. No dirty ones until <sighs> at least. Free replies is my rule. <laughs> this is a whole new world to me. I think if anyone sends you a dick pic before, like you've at least, you know, you, you nah, need, dick don't, pics. don't unsolicited nah. dick pics. I think are bad. Yeah, but none of these are unsolicited. Yeah, unsolicited because I ask. just asked for yeah, them. You just yeah, say, yeah, it's fine. Send them. How's I want them. It's okay. Actually, thanks for asking, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't look in my message requests for like three years. Oh, don't bother then. And then I did, but I did. And it was like the most mad. <laughs> it was like I sort of, I've been propelled into a sort of dystopian counter reality. Awful. Where people felt that they could sort of declare their undying love to me. And obviously not, there wasn't many, we're talking, in the course of three years, we're talking about maybe like a dozen people, but it's still pretty, pretty fucking weird, isn't it? <laughs> you loved it though. Oh, I did love it. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah. obviously I sort of, uh, I archived all of it. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't. I mean... You fucking pervert! <laughs> you love it, mate. That's a proper wrong. End. <laughs> she loves saying that. That was the most gratifying. Was... Calling me a perv was like the most gratifying yes, bit of the entire interview. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh... I'm like, well, actually, okay. Yeah. PR disaster for Pastani. <laughs> uh, should we? Should All we right, fuck it. Let's 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 leave. You were a really wicked guest, Beth. Really? Yeah, we should definitely get you back on very soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks. How often are you in Have London? Have you finished? No, I mean, we're still online, but I mean, we've, oh, right. we've, you can sort of relax because, I mean, we're it's on the way really out. Really we're about to say goodbye. We're going to die a slow death. Um, I literally never come to London. Why would I? It's horrible. All right, we'll have to invite you again then. <laughs> hey, no, we'll be going to Liverpool for a Labour Party conference. Yeah, that's oh, fucking ages yes. away, mate. Yes. It's not like that. It's about four or five months away. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I suppose. Well, we'll, we'll get you down before then, I'm we'll sure. We'll go to Manchester as well to do something, I'm sure. Because Manchester's a great city. Well, when's your book coming out? Um, September. Okay. I'll do, an, I'll, do, I'll do an event. I want my first... Have I said my first two events? I want them to be in Luton. Why? And in Belfast. Oh, fuck's Because I want, like... I want, like, count... I want demos to be, like... I want far-right demos to try and shut me down. <laughs> so I want to be in Luton. I want to, I want to like... I'm going to do my first event, like, literally opposite the sort of solarium that's owned by Tommy Robinson. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Robinson's got a solarium, yeah, like a tanning, tanning booth. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy Robinson was like a sunbed entrepreneur. All right, Beth's in the process of destroying the studio, so we are going to <laughs> end the show. Uh, all right, can we... Aaron. Yeah. 
Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to... You, you need to say something while Beth manages to turn around Sorry, to the I'll microphone. Sorry, I'll just hold it like that. It's fine. Aaron, any final words? No, I think, I think we're okay now. It's we're kind okay? Of, it's staying still. You can go to Beth now. Right. Yeah. Beth. What? Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Did I? Uh, just keep your hand there oh, so yeah. the whole studio doesn't collapse. Okay. Uh, we'll get you down soon. Thanks. Uh, this was... Oh, I forgot where my camera is. It's over there. This was Tisky Sour. Uh, we'll see you probably on Thursday. No, definitely on Thursday. Definitely on Thursday. So tune in on Thursday. Unless Aaron heads us forth again. Fucking hell. 8 p.m. Unless Aaron oh, yeah, so converse too small on again. We should, <laughs> we should finish with that, actually. Aaron nearly didn't come on the show today because his leg was injured, apparently. My foot. Uh, and sure. Me and Beth were speculating about what had potentially happened to Aaron's leg that was so serious that he couldn't come into the studio. Ultimately, I had to order him an Uber. Um... Hey, don't say that. That's true. But well, we weren't going to get a fucking black cat. Aaron, anyway, Aaron, can you explain? Oh, happened? you mean Uber in terms of politics? What happened? Just tell them what happened. Tell, tell us, tell us what, what happened to, to fuck up your leg so badly. Well, I went to these, we did, um, we did Tisky on Thursday, didn't we? Backstory is important. I went, to the, I went to the gym afterwards. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I finished the gym about one o'clock in the morning because I'm fucking, I'm a weird person. And then I went to go home and I was locked out of my house. And I realised that my things were actually back here at the office. So I I came here through a mixture of primarily public transport, but also walking, primarily walking. I oh, my God. The way he's trying to put a hold serious on, spin hold on. on. <laughs> hold on. Right. He primarily, primarily walked primarily to the studio. Hold on. <laughs> and, then, and then I picked up my keys, but I still couldn't find my card. I... I left i had to walk home so we're talking primarily walked i walked no no you have to understand walking from peckham to crystal palace is like quite far more than two hours and it was a pair of like converse this is the crucial element right so he was wearing converse (laughs) shoes and the boy can barely move he can barely move i literally didn't leave the house the last three days I've had sprained ankles on both my ankles, right? You fucking weirdo. No, no. So I've got fucked up. I've got like fucked up ankles anyway. Oh, shut up. And I was like rolling my ankle for five hours. And I literally inflated like a little water bomb. Oh, shut your face. Shut your (laughs) face. Come on. This is going to get brutal now. All right. This was Tisky Sal. We'll see you on Thursday. See you on Thursday. Good evening. Good night. Bye. Bye.